for arthropods. Okay, so you've already seen the uh, little family tree up here of the pan arthropods, uh, including the real arthropods from here on down, and the uh, two other groups that we include in the pan arthropods, which are the tardigrades and the onychophorans, uh, or velvet worms. And uh, have a look at this thing. As you are making your uh, um, invertebrate collections, the, um, the insects are only these hexapod things up here. And everything that's not a red branch, all the yellow and blue and green and purple and dark brown and whatever else, all of these things are pan arthropods that are not insects. They'd be totally good for some of those... Uh, other non-insect ones, as would any mollusk or nematode or a uh, little piece of coral if you ever happen to go to the beach. Yeah, all of these things are animals. There, there are so many kinds of animals. We're, we're just saying anything except uh, these little red branches over here would be fine for those other groups. So you see a lot of these things are still arthropods, which is fine. Uh, you're just limited in the number of actual insects actual six-legged insects that you're allowed to have. Um, anyway, so let's look at our uh, little video selections uh, over here. So you're going to have some wonderful things. Okay, so uh, Ziphocerids, uh, these would really go with the previous section. So these are going to be your horseshoe crabs. <coughs> Pardon me. And this is going to be a little uh, shot of them. You're going to see a little baby one here. It's actually adorable, really tiny and cute. And I've seen them uh, just about this small. They used to be in the lagoon at my grandparents' place in the Florida Keys, where they would go uh, in the winters. And then these two videos are uh, both about the medical uses of that um, horseshoe crab blood and how they collect it and what it's for. So that's kind of neat. Um, we're going to be getting into spiders with this section. And so we've got, yeah, early spider evolution. If you want to read that, that is going to... Um, show you some of the first arachnids, the first proper spiders, uh, still had something like a scorpion tail on the back, so that's pretty cool. Um, and uh, then this is going to talk about uh, the way that spiders process colors, which is interesting. The spider eyes, I think you just got to watch both of those. So the way spider eyes work is that there will be a sort of a plate up at the front. This has all the lenses in it. But the retina is actually on muscles, and the retina moves around inside that shell. So as the spider is looking around, if you're staring right into its face or looking at the side of its head, you can actually see where it's looking based on which way it is stretching its little uh, retina to catch the light. Yeah. So the light just comes in from one spot, and uh, yeah, you just move your, uh, you know, your your uh, plane of focus around. Instead of having to move your whole head around uh, like we do, because our retina is fixed in one spot. So, yeah, arthropods, pretty cool eyes. <laughs> um, uh, and then you've got just some uh, horrors, yeah, <laughs> nameless horrors. The uh, bird eating Goliath spider, I think, is uh, particularly gigantic, and uh, yeah, it does kill a bird. Um, the camel spider, if you've ever been to somewhere like Iraq or Afghanistan, these things get very, very large. Or maybe you got a friend who was in a place like that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> even uh, Saudi Arabia, I think. Uh, camel spider is really something. Wow. <laughs> not quite as big as a coconut crab, I guess, but uh, not much smaller. Um, the whip scorpion, we actually have to watch. This is just somebody's private video, so it's all right, I think. And so look at this little guy. It's called a whip scorpion. And there are its little chelicera on the front. And, ooh, it's trying to, it would really like to pinch. Yeah. <laughs> and you see the pinch isn't really hurting this person much. But uh, yeah, you can keep these as pets. And so uh, this person is playing with, I'm assuming his, or maybe her, I don't know, a uh, whip scorpion. Uh, and this is before mealtime. <laughs> <laughs> So in that something, yeah, I just, uh, I don't know. I really like those. I think they're really cool looking. <laughs> but that is a very primitive arthropod. Uh, so it's got the massive chelicera out front, which are little feeding pincer, and you can just see them there. And uh, then the normal set of uh, uh, legs behind it. So there you go. Yeah, definitely not an insect, uh, but uh, yeah. Not really, yeah. 
<laughs> not really like anything else you'd see either. Um, so there's little fangs in the front. Those are going to be, um, yeah, used to uh, grab their food and put it in their mouth. Okay, so let's look at some of these things and let's turn on the captioning uh, over here. Actually, let's turn off the video. Okay, boom. And turn on the captioning. There we go. Okay, so these are some very primitive relatives of um, uh, modern arthropods. These are things called Eurypterids. Uh, E-U-R-Y-P-T-E-R-I-D-S. Oh yeah, it's spelled it correctly. Okay, and uh, these things lived under the ocean, and yeah, they were called sea scorpions, or they have been called sea scorpions by people who find the fossils of them. Um, compare that to this guy, which is called a vinegaroon, or this would be a, a whip-tailed uh, scorpion, um, or some people call it a whip scorpion, but uh, people call the other thing a whip scorpion, which is somewhat different. But you can see those uh, fancy mouth parts up here, um, uh, the mandibles and maxilla there. You got the chelicera going on up front, and you got the eight pairs of legs on each side, and an extra little appendage at the back, which is something that we did see on that uh, eurypterid. Here is the little guy, or rather, a relative of the little guy that we were just looking at. Um, yeah, there's those adorable little uh, whip scorpions. This particular kind doesn't have that long tail prong, but it is a relative. Uh, of that and I think they're pretty cool so what's the inside of a spider look like well they've got a big plate on the bottom we call that a sternum it's taking doing the same job as the sternum I guess equivalent to that uh, on a human but it's also kind of like the hood of a car so if you were to take that off then you could see all the um, interesting things that go on inside so down here we've got the nervous system highlighted in uh, uh, blue so the gut is running right here, and it's actually going to go up and over and around on top of the, uh, um, kind of through a little gap in the brain. And so the gut's going to be out at the uh, back here, um, along with the anus. We've got the, um, um, actually, sorry, this is just the gut. Uh, the next one, I think, is going to have the nervous system on it. But uh, yeah, you've got your gut running through there, and... You can see all those little parts of the front. There we go. That's our spider nervous system. So there's the gut. Thank you, finally. And the brain kind of wraps around. It's not a true ring brain that goes all the way around. Um, but, uh, yeah, they are uh, closely related. And so here's our big chelicera up at the front. And you got each of those little eyes. And so most of what we would call spiders are going to have eight different eyes. They're going to have two of these things that we would call proper uh, camera eyes at the front. These seem to be most of the way that they actually see the world. And then they're going to have three other eyes on each side for a total of eight eyes. And these others are going to be more like um, simple eyes. They can see light and darkness and they can detect movement. And so there's a paper that I stuck on the blackboard. Um, it's something like spider eye uh, test, something like that, where they've actually tested out the function of different spider eyes by taking spiders and putting a little drop of white out over <laughs> one or uh, the other of the eyes and then putting them in the same cage as something that they might like to hunt and uh, kill and seeing the path that they take to it. So if they take a really straight path and just run right at it and pounce on it, then that would indicate that their eyes are uh, working. And uh, yeah, if not, then uh, not. And what you see is that if they um, cover up these big uh, front camera eyes, then essentially the spider just takes a zigzag pattern. It seems to have some uh, something like perhaps hearing or uh, scent to guide it, and it does get to the prey eventually, but it is uh, very inefficient. And then uh, it's actually a nice experiment where they took off those little eye caps so that the spiders could be happy again. But uh, as we saw before, we've got the brain here, and it's going to be in two sections. You're going to have an outer brain that's going to run on normal sort of neurotransmitters. You're going to have a serotonin uh, core of the brain in the bottom. And serotonin is normally associated with, with what we call slow-twitch neurons. These are things that operate, for example, the gut, or that just they, they work a little bit slower, like more primitive things. And so we think the serotonin brain is probably 
our remnant of the more primitive brain, at least in evolutionary terms. And you can see at each uh, little branch, as we're going off to one of the legs, you've got a little ganglion. Look at that, a little tiny ganglia, just like in every other arthropod. arthropod. There we go. So this is a um, view of the spider's eye. So they actually uh, correct the image by the shape of their um, second lens. So we've got a lens on the outside, the cornea. This is the one that's going to be fixed in place, and it's basically part of the uh, shell, or it's fused in place with the rest of the shell. The thing on the inside, um, so we've got a layered retina. They can see uh, different things in different layers, or have a better chance of picking up the light. Um, but the second lens is actually going to focus that light out uh, onto here. And the spider will uh, be able to move this eye tube around. So it'll have muscles hooked up to the eye tube, and it can independently move each of those two front eyes. And so as you watch the videos, look for the spider. Look for the times when it's looking right at the camera and then looking away, trying to find something uh, worth eating, probably. <laughs> Spiders are uh, very clever. There are some interesting nature documentaries. They show the ability to plan ahead. Uh, so the, the one that I'm uh, thinking of is an Attenborough documentary, as all the best are, I think. And uh, it's got one of these Australian spiders. And what it does is it tries a couple different methods to grab a uh, particularly tasty looking insect. So it tries to approach, tries a direct approach. That doesn't really work. And so it goes over, it wanders several feet away to find a tree and then climbs up the tree, figures out which branch it needs to be on, follows that over. And meanwhile, its eyes are good, but they can't really see long distance. They're not really for that. But it's got some concept of the world and of the position of these things. And uh, it attaches a little thread to the branch and drops down right on top of uh, this prospective uh, piece of food. Yeah, just really uh, sort of clever hunting behavior that would require something almost like a consciousness, I would say, to carry it out. And if you think about it, we've been focusing on brains quite a lot. And a brain is really just, uh, it's just a bunch of nerves but it's kind of like a consciousness engine or a cognition engine. So at the lowest possible level, it's just a connection center where the nerves that are coming in from different parts are going to cross over to each other and have you know some kind of effect on each other. But on top of it, you have this thing called the mind, which is really quite fascinating and something that I don't understand uh, particularly well. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, it's interesting how you build a consciousness from what is essentially meat and chemicals. Anyway, let's continue on. Uh, here's our last uh, little one. These are some of the other guys. So these are going to be the myriapods. And so the myriapods do not have chelicera. They're not chelicerates. Um, those are going to be the things that we were covering at the beginning. But they will have these guys, maxillipeds which are a modified claw, as are all the arthropod mouth parts, we now know. And uh, these maxillipeds are uh, going to be poisonous in something like a scorpion. Um, this looks like a uh, Scolopendra scorpion would have that kind of appearance of plates on the back. And they're a big famous one. They're really colorful. They, uh, some of them are blue or bright orange or red. Um, and so, yeah, you'll have antenna coming off, and those are going to come out of the first segment, uh, basically an extension of the brain. You'll have the eye actually hooked up to the brain, which will be somewhere down in here. And then coming out from behind it, you'll have the uh, different uh, uh, parts. You'll have your maxillas, and uh, first and second, and uh, your maxilla ped, your little poisonous uh, claw there. Then you'll have modified legs, and then you'll have actual walking legs behind it. And in each one of these uh, myriapod, um, so myriapod think they have a myriad of legs, pod being uh, foot. So uh, many foot, a myriad of feet, myriapoda. That's how you can remember them. And thank you. I think this is the last slide for this section. Yes, it is. So let's all go on to the next section.